so the poem begins with uh, <clears throat> this repetitive nursery rhyme sort of a uh, so sort of a tune you do not do you do not do any more black show in which i have lived like a foot for 30 years poor and white barely daring to breathe or achu now look at the word black show now this is a reference a common reference to a nursery rhyme where a person is fitted on the shoe for many many years so i told you nursery rhyme plays an important role in the poem because this is a an overlapping of the childish imagery or the childhood imagery and uh, the harsh reality of adulthood how a girl lost her father as a young child and somehow has not come in peace uh, reconciled with the father's death and that has led to a very disturbed uh, evolvement of the uh, child's uh, psychology even when she grows into a young woman and the narrator herself confesses that she tried to commit a uh, commit suicide when she was 20 year old and remember this poem is uh, very much autobiographical and Sylvia Plath did try to commit suicide and she ended her life uh, she she ended her life in the year 1962 a very tragic way anyways so then this uh, this achu again a very childish it is uh, uh, if the short question is asked what does the word achu imply now achu is it, it is more like an utterance it is translingual like mm, ho hmm it has no language it is translingual and it is childish it is childlike almost like a childish exp um, expression it it has no it it is a uh, it it uh, goes beyond the, the uh, trivial uh, uh, status quo of language as such okay so then second paragraph daddy i have had to kill you you died before i had time marvel heavy a bag full of god ghastly statue with one great toe so she says that daddy i have to kill you a very macabre statement remember it's a modern poem and it's very complex psychologically very complex so she has to kill him perhaps in her mind then if you since we are focusing on the short questions look at this so she thinks that he was a very heavy man uh, even when she tried to put him in her imagination in 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 this bag okay and then she says big as a fresco seal your toe now did uh, i mention to you otto plath had gangrene an infection and that led to him amputing or cutting off his foot so this is a an indirect implication or reference to her father's gangrene a gray toe big as a frisco seal so it looked like a seal her his toe had grown big so if the question asks uh, uh, what is the reference to frisco seal then you have to go back to how the poem is autobiographical and how it is a reference to auto plath her father's uh, gangrene that led to or resulted in him amputing his leg finally so then <clears throat> then she says that your body was so big that your head ha uh, was in freakish atlantic and then the body was in the uh, beautiful nozzet now this is this particular stanza it is a reference to the beautiful holiday that the plath family used to enjoy when they were when she was a child and they used to uh, sail across the atlantic so that is the reference to all the beautiful uh, places and she says i used to pray to recover you achudu again achudu is a translingual a child like uh, utterance it is not a word uh, it can be said by anybody a person speaking in any language 
Then the language reference comes. In the German tongue in the Polish town, scrapped flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. But the name of the town is common, my Polak friend. Now the personal is intermingling or overlapping with the political. The political events of the Second World War is slowly creeping in in the poem. Till now it was personal between the how she missed her father, how she thought of him as this ghastly big statue. Now we shift on to the German tongue. And she says, a Polish town. Remember, Poland was occupied was by Germany. Otto Plath was from Poland. Okay, and scrapped flat by the roller of wars three times. The same word is repeated. And it is a modern poem. So it, it comes with the baggage of complexity. So the emotions are being reflected. Please try to understand. The emotions are being uh, reflected right through words. Very less words but more emotions. She does not say so much of war. Because it loses its, um, uh, it loses the, the pain. But the moment you say wars, 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 as if you were, you were tired of war, so many wars were being seen. So she says wars, wars, and this uh, entire town was ruled by, uh, by rulers. So the German uh, tyranny over the Polish towns, that is what. And remember, Otswich, the Holocaust, the, the gas, one, one, one of the chambers, is very much in Poland so but the name of the town is uh, common my Polak friend Polak Polak means somebody who's from Poland says there are dozen or two so I never could tell where you put your foot your root I never could talk to you the tongue stuck in my jaw so they had a very uh, it seems that the father and daughter had uh, problems communicating with each other that was also very much there it stuck in a barbed wire snare, each, 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 I could hardly speak. I thought every German was you and the language was obscene. So why is the German language obscene? Because here the German language is being interrelated to the uh, fascist Nazi Germany. So since the Nazi Germany's uh, unleashed uh, atrocities over their minorities like the Jews even their language seems to be extremely obscene irritating especially considering the fact that they were all the time giving hate speeches in that language through their mics through their radios so everybody started hating that language for uh, the simple simple reason were people who were speaking it were talk, talking about hate for other uh, communities and other races also they they believed in the superior aryan race that was also there then an engine an engine shuffling me off like a jew a jew to dachu or switch belson i began to talk like a jew i think i may well be a jew now though there might be a short question like what are dachau or switch belson now these are small towns in and around poland and these towns are important because the holocaust or the jews were persecuted in some of these gas chambers in uh, these uh, uh, towns so i strongly recommend you this is uh, going a little bit away from um, daddy of course it is very much in context please watch the film the boy uh, uh, in stripped pajamas if you have not watched then there's another film uh, sinler's list so these uh, movies these films are uh, they very much uh, echo the uh, pathos of the world uh, war two especially in, in terms of how the jews were persecuted by nazi germany so uh, and she says an engine an engine shuffling me off like a jew so world war two one important <coughs> Uh, memory of World War II is, of course, the trains. The trains, the railway had already developed so much and this was Europe, so it was much more developed. 
and uh, many many Jews were taken by trains to these small towns to be persecuted or to be killed so she is actually an engine and engine see how she doesn't say a train a railway train she's uh, just like a child would say an engine and engine like a child says a car a car shuffling me off like a Jew taking me like a Jew so just like Jews were taken so this is the imagery or complex imagery inside her mind and as uh, discussed earlier in the very first introductory portion of the poem of the text we did say that she equates herself she relates herself very much to a Jew and she says I think I may be I may well be a Jew then uh, the snows of the Tyrol, the clear uh, beer of Vienna. Remember, please remember, towns are very, very important or cities are. There might be a question, what are the cities that are mentioned? Okay, the snows of the Tyrol, the clear beer of Vienna are not very pure or true. With my gypsy ancestors and my weird luck and my tarot pack and my tarot pack, I may be a bit of a Jew. Now, as already mentioned, uh, the Nazis were very race conscious. They wanted to wipe out all the impure blood. They wanted Germany to be free of all impurities. Only the pure Aryan race is supposed to, uh, it was fit to live in Germany. And uh, of course, uh, she, the narrator says that I am a mixed blood. She confesses and she not just confesses, she, prou she proudly proclaims that she is a mixed race uh, because uh, Plath, don't be confused with the narrator and the poet because they are the same if you look at it. In a modern po poetry, it, the, there hardly makes a difference between the identity of the poet and the narrator. So, Plath's mother was from Austria so somehow she felt that she was not a pure German she did not want to be recognized as a pure German and she says that my ancestress was a gypsy now who is a gypsy someone who doesn't have a fixed home so these Nazis are shouting about a fixed home a home that belongs to them that only belongs to them. Nobody should come in. And she says, I'm a gypsy with no home. And with my interest in tarot pack. Now tarot pack, of course, tarot means card. If you go back to your wasteland, you have uh, icy pearls in the eyes. Isn't it? That That is how the tarot lady starts in the uh, quarter in five, I think, of wasteland. So uh, what is the tarot card is how fortune is seen you'll see this in Jane Eyre too so Sylvia Plath was very much interested in tarot cards she was very much interested in occultism so it is a relation to that uh, to that so she says I may be a bit of a Jew and then she confesses I have always been scared of you now overlapping of the personal and the political has happened it has reached its climax when she says i i was always scared of you and you in italics we don't know whether she means the father or hitler but she was scared always scared with your luftwaffe your gobbledygook and your neat mustache and your aryan eye bl bright blue panjerman panjerman oh you now luftwaffe is their airplane okay their air force the german air force during the world war 2 were known as uh, were known as the luftwaffe now gobbledygook actually is a childish insult to people who uses a lot of technical terms like Luftwaffe, Gestapo. These were all, Gestapo was their secret police. So they had a lot of technical terms attached to them. And technical terms, why do we use technical terms? So that people take us more seriously. So she's making fun of their effort of being extremely serious. 
okay a very interesting approach so she says with your neat mus this is a, a description a, of a typical nazi man what what did a typical nazi soldier look like he had clear 